Hello, this week on Pots and Trowels, we're going to be looking at trees and doing just a little bit of winter pruning. And we're also going to be looking at labels, but we're going to be looking at plastic free alternatives. I love trees in the garden. We've got this little copse here of silver birch. This is the Betula Jack Montii, the one that has the really lovely white stem when it peels off in the spring. And I think trees are really important in the garden, not just because they make it look good, but they're good for the environment, of course, and they're also good for wildlife. And if you haven't got room for a biggish tree, and this is what we'd call a, a medium sized tree, but if you've only got a small garden, there are lots of trees that are suitable for small gardens of every shape and size, either to plant in the garden or to put them into large containers. So please, please, if you haven't got a tree in your garden, make sure this year you plant a tree for the good of everybody. Occasionally though, they do get a little bit too big and, and we've got here this little copse, as I say, of silver birch, underplanted with sort of woodlandish shrubs, which work really well. But if we leave them to grow on their own, they tend to get too big and very often, it's the lower branches that shade out the plants below. So we can do a pruning process called crown lifting, which is basically, we're gonna take off some of the lower branches to raise the canopy of the tree. So we get the canopy slightly higher up. It improves the shape of the tree, but by taking off some of the lower branches, it means it allows more light through to the ground. So you can grow a selection of shrubs down there and ground cover because there's plenty of light getting to them and moisture, of course. So this is about the size now where I think it needs a little bit of pruning doing to it. If you do it when they're young, it's much better for the tree than wait until you've got really thick wounds on there. So you could be very, very light and using a pair of secateurs, just take off some of these side branches. So it creates this funnel effect. But I think what I'm gonna do with this one, I'm gonna bite the bullet. Um, I've had a look at the tree from the front and I think by removing one, two, three branches, it will improve the tree in the long run. So my secateurs aren't any good for that. So what I'm gonna do is to use a, a small pruning saw, a foldable pruning saw. And I'm gonna just basically, this is what I love about birch. When you peel the bark off, you get this wonderful creamy white underneath. So I'm gonna peel that off just so I can see where I'm pruning. And I'm gonna prune this one off. Now, I don't wanna cut it flush. I want to cut it. If you look around the base of any branch, there is a collar where it naturally thickens to give it support to hold it. So we want to cut on the outside of that. So it's gonna be slightly facing outwards. Support it with your hand so it doesn't tear off and rip the bark below. If it was a big wound, I would probably undercut it, but this one is only a small wound. And then I'm just using a, a sharp saw. I'm just gonna prune down and make a nice neat job. And there we have it as I knock Sean the cameraman out the way and we've got it there, we can see we've got that nice wound there. So what I'm gonna do is take these two off as well and then it will balance it up. So just carefully cutting that one off again, taking the weight so it doesn't do any damage. Bring that down. And then the last one is just here. And hopefully from where Sean is standing, that will improve the shape by just raising the canopy. So we've got a higher canopy there, more light in here, but we've still got that lovely bark that we can enjoy. So by removing those three, we've lifted the crown slightly. We've got the head of the tree a little bit higher up, so we're getting more light now. So the plants underneath are gonna grow so much better. Um, but you need to do that while the tree is totally dormant. So here we are now, we're in January. So try to make sure you do it probably by the middle of February because by then the sap will be starting to rise, especially on birch. The sap rises really, really early on those. You've mentioned the sap rising. Mm. What does that mean when you say the sap rising? Good question, Sean. The sap is literally, yes, as soon as the, the days get a little bit longer and the, the soil warms up in the air, the tree's thinking about growing. And in the case of birch, which are really, really hardy trees, they start into growth early in the season. So it is, the roots are now taking in moisture or will be taking in moisture and that's coming up the trunk of the tree uh, and it's obviously then going to go up to the, the, the leaves as they develop. If you cut a limb off it will bleed so you need to get in there nice and early before that happens. 
Now obviously we've pruned some branches off here. Um, the temptation is just to get rid of them, but don't because you can use these around the garden later on in the year. I'm going to cut them into nice size lengths depending on what you want to use them for, but I usually make them a couple of feet or something like that. So I shall get lots of those. They can be used to support perennials in the borders through the summer, or I use them as pea sticks in the veg garden for peas and beans. Anything that needs a little bit of support, we can just push these in. So a good natural way to recycle this from the garden. So there we go, that's the start of pea sticks for the veg garden for, for this year. So labels, I mentioned at the beginning we were going to talk about labels and non-plastic labels. We need to mention plastic labels first though because I'm sure lots of people have got plastic labels kicking around. These are just some that have already been used. My thought is if you've got plastic labels, don't throw them away, just keep using them. If you've written on them with pencil, that rubs off quite easily. But if you've used a marker pen, that's a bit more difficult to get off. But I find a little bit of turps on some kitchen roll washes them off and it also sterilizes them at the same time. So keep using them and using them and using them um, and that's absolutely fine. Just don't buy any more. But I've also been making my own non-plastic labels just out of offcuts of wood and things from the garden. Very simple ones are lollipop sticks. Um, these are really, really cheap to buy on the internet, lollipop sticks. And if you go into certain fast food places, they do stirrers for tea, which are longer than these. You can cut them in half and make two labels. So just drink lots of tea there. And you can write on those with pencil, biro, or a marker pen. They only last one season, but then they can go in the compost heap and they rot down really quickly. So you're recycling them. For something a little more sturdy in the vegetable garden, I'd been making my own wooden labels. And this is how gardeners used to make them centuries ago before plastic was invented. This is just a bit of um, planed timber, really inexpensive to buy. Um, I've used a coat of outdoor white paint on it to protect them and then just write on them with a marker pen. And they look really good in the vegetable garden anyway, quite authentic. And then at the end of the year, if you're not growing cabbage Savoy King again, you just sand it lightly, bit of paint on and rewrite them again. So they will last for several years in the garden. Something very, very simple are these. When I'm doing pruning in the garden, I could in fact use some of the uh, birch stems. This is a birch stem. So just cut the stems into length and then using a knife, just that's the label there. I've got a pointy end there. Just use your knife and just sliver off a piece like that let that dry for a day or so and then you can write on there with a marker pen and they look really rustic if you've got them around your perennials in the garden. So again all your prunings can be used and then just for a bit of fun in the orchard I've been making these. These are made out of just some off cuts of plywood that I'd got that was just going to probably lie around in the shed forever and then eventually get dumped. So I have just cut them into the shape of an apple in this case. It could be a pear, it could be a plum, it could just be a square or a rectangle. Paint them with a coat of paint write on the variety of your apples, hang them on. So again, you're recycling some old timber and they just look a bit quirky in the garden. So I'm sure lots of people have got off cuts of wood kicking around their shed. So use them and make your own individual personal labels for the garden. So thank you for watching. Hope that's been of use to you this week. Please tell all your friends, please share it. And we'll be back next week with more things to do in the garden. Thank you and goodbye. <laughs>